Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Everyday Tracks. I'm Phil. This is my journey on podcast form for you. In this episode, I am going to be talking about my new podcast device, the Tascam Porta Capture X8. What is it going to do? What it can do? What it can't do? And we'll go into a few of the apps that it has. And we're going to talk about this and all the functions that it has as well. Test out a few different microphones, perhaps. We're going to do a lot of things in this podcast episode. So kind of sit back and relax and enjoy all the sounds that are coming out of the air and into your ears. In this episode, I decided to kind of jump ahead a little bit. I have been posting uh, episodes that I produce chronologically. Uh, I think I'm up to like episode 13 now. Uh, I don't think it's even been posted yet, actually. But I wanted to talk about this to kind of break up the monotony of all the podcast episodes where I've been talking about the Jeep and nothing else, really, it seems. So I wanted to uh, kind of do this as a kind of a geeky tech filled type of episode there's really not a lot that i can do with it i still don't have all the equipment that i need to operate this thing in its full function simply because it's just not possible in this state or much of anywhere else and i can't do it here at the house because my stepmom and dad have arrived and they seem to be here all the time and will probably will be here a lot Mainly because my stepmom just recently had uh, knee replacement surgery, and she's still recovering, and she'll be recovering for a while. So uh, they're going to be here. Uh, They're going to be kind of doing their own thing. They're they're, they're basically just enjoying the retired life. They do whatever they want to do whenever they feel like doing it. (laughs) They have no schedule. must be nice. So I'm going to talk about a few of the things that this uh, Tascam Porta Capture X8 has. What does the X8 come from? There's another version of this, a much smaller version, the Tascam Porta Capture X6. And what does it do? What's, what's really the only difference between the two? And I'll talk about that as well. I had been using a Tascam uh, DR07. I don't know when I bought this thing. It must have been in 07, 08, somewhere in that neighborhood. Maybe. I was still living in Texas. I had just lost my job. I had uh, been a contractor for ICE, the Immigration and Customs Enforcement, the agency that's responsible mainly for immigration. And uh, it, it's a story that I'll have to tell some other time. I wanted to kind of dive in to... Uh, more podcasting the tools that i had been using not sufficient enough they were not good enough i needed something that would break the mold of podcasting of the era and i thought that i could do that with the tascam dr07 so i bought it and i don't know how much i paid for it uh back in that day it was probably a lot of money you know Maybe $130, maybe $140, maybe $78. I have no idea. I can't really remember when. But I bought it off of Amazon, and it shipped over here. Thankfully, I did have an SD card that I can stick into it. I had a pair of headphones that I can use to monitor it. And it had a phone windscreen, which I immediately knew I was going to have to use forever. I was going to have to use that phone windscreen forever because the microphones were so sensitive to just about anything, including wind. If you were just moving around, you could hear the microphones react to it, and it reacted very negatively in the recording. So I knew that I was going to have to do something about that. But I didn't really go much further than that. Phone windscreen, hopefully it wasn't windy outside. And Texas is always windy outside all the time. So you have to have some kind of windscreen or something when you're recording anything with audio in Texas. I've been using that for a long time. Fast forward to earlier this year, I think it was probably sometime in March, maybe. 
And I was uh, recording a podcast using the Tascam DR07 with the phone windscreen that still was on it. I still have that thing, or still had it. And as I was walking down the road, the damn windscreen fell off. It blew off, actually, because the wind was so intense that I couldn't even, it wouldn't stay on. Uh, It wouldn't even stay on when it wasn't windy. And I took a big chance hoping that maybe the uh, the windscreen would at least record some of the audio that I was recording. And by the time I looked down the next time, it was gone. And there was no way that I could find it uh, because the wind was so intense. So I kind of gave up. I, there was no way that I was ever going to record anything. When I started recording after the windscreen blew off, it was full bars of nothing but wind. I wasn't even talking into it. I had the microphones turned down at the very lowest setting. I had the preamp gain turned all the way down. And still, it was so bad that it was registering full bars of nothing but wind. That's all it was doing. It cannot handle any wind at all. None. You have to be in a very quiet environment with no wind, perhaps maybe inside the house, in order to record anything. And you have to have the windscreen. You cannot avoid it. You just have to have it. Even when you're sitting inside with the uh, Tascam DR07 on a tripod mount, you still had to have them. It just would pick up every freaking thing that moved. The wind, anything. So I I just threw it in the trash. I mean, it was completely worthless. It does have auxiliary inputs. And it does have the ability to record uh, using a different microphone, which was would have been fine if I had a microphone to record with. I didn't. I didn't have anything to plug into it because all of my microphones are um, they're they're balanced audio, and I can't record balanced audio into a recorder that doesn't have balanced inputs. I can make it work, but I wasn't really feeling like I needed to do that. I think that I had the task can. DR07 for a very long time, and it was time to move on. To move on, so that's what I did. I bought the uh, Tascam Porta Capture X8. I have recorded over 4,000 clips with the Tascam DR07. I think it was time to move on. The uh, Tascam Porta Capture X8 has a lot of inputs. Lots. <laughs> it has a lot of inputs. When I say lots of inputs, it has a lot of inputs. I'll talk about that. What? kind of inputs does it have what can you do with them uh it's actually pretty pretty advanced and uh when i come back after the break we'll talk about it now one thing that i haven't solved yet is trying to balance the uh, tascam porta capture x8 and a microphone in one hand so I could have the other hand to do things with. It's not very easy. Uh, I'm waiting for the wind to die down because it's making a mess everywhere. There's big plans coming up. Now, right now, it's pretty gusty. Uh, I don't know what the wind gust is. It's about ready to rain sometime later. And uh, it's not terrible. I mean, it feels pretty comfortable out, out, other than the fact that the wind is just blowing like crazy. But uh, even as windy as it is, you can still hear me. I mean, it's it's not the best sounding audio, but you can still hear me. Let's see, let's see if you can hear the wind. Get away from it. If I had something in stereo, actually, that wouldn't sound bad at all. And I had something that I could use to hold on to the microphone so you didn't have to hear me kind of mangling it, trying to hold on to it while I'm also recording. I'm using a very short, say this is a one foot long uh, XLR mic cable in order to record it so I can hold everything in one hand without a whole lot of wires dangling around. Because another thing that I've noticed is if uh, if the wires are dangling and they hit each other, it the microphone picks it up. The microphone picks up everything. Every one of them does. I have a wide variety of microphones that I'm using. 
Uh, right now I'm using a Rode NTG1 shotgun mic. This is not the kind of shotgun mic that uh, you would normally use for podcast recording and, <laughs> and certainly not walking around. Uh, the NTG1 is a uh, condenser mic, so you have to use phantom power. And on the uh, Porta Capture, it does do phantom power, but it just sucks the batteries down. I'll talk more about that a little bit later, about uh, power, batteries, and, and the like, uh, when it comes to talking about battery life. But uh, right now, uh, I'm outside and just kind of enjoying a little bit of the sunshine before the rain starts a little bit later on this evening. What have they been doing here? Ah, oh, I see. Huh. So the Tascam Porta Capture X8 is a, a multi-channel recorder. Just think of it as a portable recording studio. Um, well, without the acoustic treatments and the microphones that you have to supply. Uh, but it's... It is a uh, pretty fully functional recording, or is it recorder as it is. Uh, it's basically the one thing that you would buy that does everything. Almost. I mean, it does some things, but it does not one thing very well. And, uh, and I bought this for podcast recording mainly. I've used it for other things, but I've mainly used this for podcast recording. Um, just in case I had multiple people who wanted to come and do a show. And I've had uh, asked some people to be guests on my podcast. That may come to pass eventually. But I've asked multiple people. And, and I want to make sure that I have all the equipment necessary to be able to do it without having to use the phone. Which is not a very good idea. And uh, so far, uh, it looks like I would be more than capable of being able to do this the X8 I'm not really sure why they call it an X but the 8 comes from 8 tracks of recording and you're probably wondering to yourself okay I'm looking at a picture of this thing and it only has 6 inputs where are the other 2 well it only has 6 inputs the maximum recording uh, inputs is 6 you only have 6 so you could use any number of, of combination of inputs. Uh, you can use the standard uh, included microphones that are on the top that you can disconnect. You can use those inputs. Uh, it does have uh, four XLR inputs four, uh, or four TRS connections, uh, either TRS or XLR, balanced audio. You can use those on the side. It's got two on one side, two on the other. I'm using number three on this recorder. And then uh, it also has the capability of recording line in. So you can use a line level source and record in it. Yeah, this thing is fully functional. But one of the, th one of the things that I was really amazed about is that it also records via USB. It has a f almost fully functional USB system on this thing. Uh, you can record into it via USB. You can play back via USB. Uh, you can use it as a USB mass storage device. You can use the uh, included microphones or any type of microphone um, and output it via USB to the computer or an iPhone or an Android device. And you can also read stuff off the SD card. This thing is something else, yet it still only has six inputs. That's all it's got. And in order to record with it, with one of its six inputs, you have to go into the menu and, and assign which of the six tracks that you're recording to, to those inputs. So it's got a lot of inputs, but it also has only six channels of recording. So if you're recording a stereo channel, that leaves you with only four, because it treats each channel as a mono channel, not a stereo channel. So you can record up to three stereo channels or six mono channels. And about the only way you can get around that limitation is to use another mixer. And then record into that. But if you're recording podcast and most of the dialogue is, is in mono, like people just talking into microphones, 
you could have six inputs and six people talking, monitor it with headphone output on this thing, and it still sound acceptable. And the quality was phenomenal. <laughs> on top of these six inputs, it records to 44.1 kilohertz sampling rate, 48 kilohertz sampling rate, 96 kilohertz sampling rate, and 192 kilohertz sampling rate. Now, the reason why I decided to go with the X8, one of the reasons, uh, is that it recorded in the 192 kilohertz sampling rate. The X6, with its four inputs, only records to 96 kilohertz sampling rate. That's it. Which is more than adequate for just about anything. I mean, I don't know of a whole lot of people that are going to be using 192 kilohertz sampling rate or even 96. Most people are probably going to use either 44, 1, or 48 because of the file sizes. They're so gigantic at uh, 40, 48 at 24 bits, which is, I believe, what this thing is recording to right now. But uh, when you get into 32-bit floating, oh gosh, the, the file sizes are just enormous. And uh, it, fills, it fills up a card pretty quick. So you have 16, 24, and 32-bit recording, 32-bit float. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. There's no way you can possibly screw up a recording if you're recording in 32. And if you are monitoring your files and you're monitoring your level, then you'll never need anything more than 24-bit. But the 32-bit is there just in case you need it. And it's kind of awesome. I have no idea what they're doing over there. The, sh the shotgun mic really does work pretty well. I have no idea what that is. In fact, I'd be kind of curious to see uh, what it would sound like if I wasn't monitoring. Because I have headphones on. I have to monitor it so I know what this thing sounds like. Or at least relatively sure what it's going to sound like. Because one of the things that I don't know is how these microphones react. Because they've never been outside at all. And none of the microphones that I'm using have been outside. So I don't know what it, how it's going to react if I just take this thing out and record but I would like to at least try to figure out how good the shotgun mic is and how well it works or how far away it works before the uh, audio starts to drop off. So far, I'm, I'm actually pretty impressed and pretty pleased. Um, I'll talk to you about uh, last night when I was recording a radio broadcast. I was wanting to do a dual record with the line level input and the USB input. And my Windows computer had some problems with it. So I'll talk about that when I come back after the break. Who listens to radio? That go where you go medium called radio. That's with you every night through the long commuter fight. And in the morning with your toast and mama lady -o. Who listens to radio, no matter if it's summer, winter, spring, or fall? Who listens to radio, only 150 million? 150 million people! I'll stand if you don't mind. All right. <clears throat> We're honored to have with us today Mrs. Dodo Paraphernalia. Mrs. Paraphernalia, you are a designer of women's clothes. Uh, how would you describe your particular... I specialize in go-go. I see. Whatever is in, whatever is now, whatever is happening, baby, that is what I try and design. That dress you're wearing, is it one of your own? Yes. This is a very now dress. It's a mini gown made entirely of metallic fibers. Uh, is that a radio I hear playing? No, that's my dress. You mean you have a radio built into your dress? I mean my dress is a radio. I see. Can you turn down your dress for a moment? I'll make a stab at it. 
There we go. I still have a few bugs to work out of it. Yes. <clears throat> what gave you the idea for this electronic chemise? Well, with 25 million teeny boppers in America and about 90% of those listening to the radio over four hours a day, I thought it would make it easier if they could wear the radios instead of carrying them. That sounds logical. The antenna is woven into the metal fibers of the dress. I'm having trouble controlling the stations, though. Mm -hmm. It seems that whenever I move my... Now, five minutes of the latest news. Red China today delivered an ultimate hips a different station comes in which could be disastrous for dancing yeah where does the sound uh, come out all over arthur godfrey seems to come from my rib cage and huntley brinkley under the arms which gives kind of a stereo effect i can imagine they sort of tickle if you want to know uh-huh. what other programs does your transistor dress receive well lowell thomas is no problem but i have to be careful not to sit on edward p morgan in the news what about the rock stations they come in all over the dress one day, you've got the Jefferson Airplane in your navel, and the next day, the monkey's on your back. And where are the Rolling Stones? Right over my gallbladder, usually. Who listens to radio? Only 150 million people. That's all. Welcome back to Everyday Tracks, a personal podcast journey. I am your host, David. Okay, so I had a Pepsi in here. I had one more Pepsi, I think. I thought, unless they've moved it or put it in the fridge. They may have put it in the fridge just to get the trash out. But I don't see it in here. As I'm recording... A radio broadcast off the air via the radio. I uh, I also wanted to record uh, the stream coming out of the uh, out of the streaming encoder at the radio station uh, right on the computer. And so while I was trying to do that, I ran into a lot of problems getting it to work. First of all, when you hit the record button on this thing, you cannot make any changes to the inputs or to any of the configurations. You're locked out of them. Um, you just can't do it. You, in order to change them, you have to stop recording. You have to stop recording to go into the launcher in order to change the settings. <clears throat> in each of those modes, it does have a hamburger menu on the top left that you can touch and go into those input settings, but it's it's gone whenever you go to change, when you go to record, the, the hamburger menu option is gone. It uh, completely locks you out of all of it so you can't do anything to this thing while it's recording. If you do anything, you have to do it while it's not recording, which kind of sucks because I was really hoping that I could uh, not lose my recordings, not have to stop recording just so I can do something and make it work. But it was all for naught because when I connected the uh, USB to the computer to record, it wasn't recognizing the USB at all, unless I towed it to use it as a mass storage device. And that's the only way it would work. And I still couldn't record anything because, again, anytime you do anything other than recording, you have to stop recording. You can't change any of the settings or go into the launcher unless you stop recording. So you, it's, it's a one-trick pony, basically. If you want to do anything, you have to stop recording. The only thing that you can change while it's recording are the mix levels, because it does have an onboard uh, virtual onboard mixer on it. And you can change those settings. So if somebody is a little bit too loud, you can turn down the mic gain or turn down the pot or the fader on the touchscreen. But that's it. That's the only thing you can do. Like right now, uh, if the hold wasn't on, I can uh, change the uh, level. So I can turn this down a lot and then turn it back up of course I'm processing the audio so you'll never notice the difference uh, we're going to turn it down a little bit there we go uh, that's it I mean there's really not much you can do with this thing if, unless, it's, unless it's not recording so uh, 
So I'm sitting here trying to get this thing to work. I only have a two-hour radio show that I'm trying to record, and I'm kind of stuck trying to get this thing to work, and it's always throwing up errors. All the time, it's throwing up some sort of error. It cannot start. It cannot start. It cannot. Co-10. It cannot start. This device cannot be started. And I'm thinking to myself, why? So I go into the device properties in Windows, and it's thinking that it's an iPhone or a Google Pixel 7 Pro. Now, that might be the reason why it's not working, because it thinks it's a phone, and it's not a phone. I mean, there is nothing that a phone, either iOS, iPhone, uh, iPad, or i whatever it's called, iTouch, or iPod Touch, yeah. Uh, there's, there's nothing that can be done on a Google Pixel 7 Pro that it would require it to do what the Tascam Porta Capture X8 is capable of doing. The Tascam Porta Capture X8 is much more capable of doing a lot of the things that I want it to do than the phones can. So why is it thinking it's a phone? I don't I just really never could understand that. So well this thing sounds sick. Um, so what I had to do was go on the Tascam website eventually and uh, download the drivers for it. After that, it worked. <laughs> After that, I had to download the ISI, ASIO drivers for it. After that, fully functional, fully cool, fully okay. This thing works really well. By the time I finally did get it to work, my radio show had long been over with. And so I couldn't do what I wanted to do. But now that it does work, I can finally record my radio show on the air without any problems. So that's one of the cool things is that I was you can record via the uh, line in or XLR balanced audio or USB all at the same time. And uh, what's really cool now that I've gotten the drivers for it, I can use the USB as a mix minus while I'm recording podcast. Isn't that cool? I can hook up a phone to it. I can hook up uh, the computer up to it and call somebody and it will use it as a mix minus. And I can interview somebody on the Porter Capture X8. And it sounds just fine. They can hear what I'm hearing. And I can hear what they're saying. And if I'm ever using another input on the Porter Capture, they'll be able to hear that too. So it's really cool. It is the best thing I think I've ever bought for podcast recording. And I and, and the, the really cool thing about it is... Uh, this thing does a lot of cool things. This thing is really awesome. So, uh, yeah, it's really awesome. I'm enjoying it. I mean, I really think that now that I got all the bugs worked out of the system, after now having this two weeks, that I can now finally go out and do some real recording. Uh, still need the windscreen. Because just like the Tascam DR07, the microphones that go on top of it cannot deal with wind. Uh, just walking around the house, and it just destroys the audio. And I can't even really get close to it to talk into it uh, like I can with these microphones. I can't do it. And that's kind of sucky because it does have some really good stereo imaging, and it's capable of doing some stereo imaging. But i got to have that windscreen. And uh, it takes about a month for it to get here. I didn't know this until recently, but they were attempting to charge me for the windscreen. And I didn't have enough of a balance on my credit card to buy it. So I got to figure out how to get that fixed. Apparently, you can take the microphones off and plug the micro- a different type of microphone into it as long as it's a condenser microphone. And uh, you can use different types of binaural microphones just like ASMR. Isn't that cool? Now, I don't have anything like that. I don't have any type of microphone that would go into these these uh, these uh, 3.5 millimeter TRS connections on top of the uh, recorder for the included mics. I don't have anything that would go into it. So maybe one day later on, I'll uh, look into buying some microphones for this thing that will plug into it and we'll go outside and do some stereo recording. That would be pretty cool, I think. I have more on... The Tascam Porta Capture X8, right after the break on Everyday Tracks. Different from all the rest. Before you call our request line to ask that we play a song for your drippy girlfriend, please think about the poor children in Africa. What would they like to hear?
Welcome back to Everyday Tracks, a personal podcast journey. I am Wayne. The FCC has released a, a statement about several uh, notices of apparent, of, of apparent liability and forfeitures to the largest mobile phone carriers, AT&T, Verizon, Sprint, and T-Mobile, for allowing people to have access to location-based data without the consumer's or customer's authorization. In 2007, the FCC changed the law where customers have to opt in to the sharing of their location data based on where their phones are at at a certain time. But apparently, the, uh, the, the, the carriers have been using that data and storing it. Now, this data can be very helpful, but unfortunately, it's also being used for nefarious purposes. Corey Hutchison, a former Mississippi County, Missouri sheriff, had used the data to track not only the locations of a judge and several state, state troopers within the Missouri Highway Patrol, but he went even further and used the data to track thousands of people by just using a phone number, uploading some fake documents, and checking a box. I mean, if it was that easy to obtain that data, who else has been obtaining data that they had no authorization for? We also know that Securus, who the uh, the former sheriff used to access location data for people he wanted to access for without a warrant, had been recording phone calls and using that data for people uh, who were doing video visits and telephone calls who weren't even in prison without a law enforcement reason to do so. And there's no telling how much of this data is still out there being used to do a wide variety of things. There's no telling. If you know, it's really old. I mean, AT&T, as far as I've read, had stopped using location-based services in 2019, but that was almost a whole year after the New York Times article was published about Corey Hutchinson using all of this data against people without a warrant. And even before then, all of these uh, hackers had been going in and looking at all this data that's been collected without any authorization whatsoever from the people who own the devices. So we really do, as a country, as a society, need to hold these companies responsible for allowing this breach to occur. Uh, $200 million for all four of these providers isn't even enough of of a deterrent to do anything to stop this. Alright, so I'm using now the Electro Voice RE20 microphone. And it's still pretty windy out here, but uh, not a whole lot coming through on the microphone or on the level meters. I am, it's, not, it's really not even that loud. I'm kind of surprised that uh, it takes a lot more energy, a lot more gain to get this thing sounding better, or louder at least. Well, an acceptable level. See, is it? Uh, it's in 24-bit, but uh, I can always turn it down and gain it up and normalize it in the audio editor. Yeah, not bad. Uh, the microphone sounds pretty good. I don't know if it's impedance match though. I would have thought that uh, that the microphone would have, would have not sounded so muddy. At least it, according to what I'm hearing, it sounds kind of muddy. I don't know. It's uh, it just for some reason doesn't sound very, very good, very right. And I may be closed micing this thing a bit too much too, so it may have something to do with it because it does have proximity effect. So the closer I talk into it, the uh, the sound changes are a lot too, and it's not nearly as muddy sounding. Oh, I see the kids have been back here building things in the backyard. The, across the creek, which I just got finished traversing over the bridge. Uh, 
So this thing has a lot of different apps. And uh, something I didn't realize until just now, uh, Sweetwater is now sending me the kit that I ordered that has the windscreen and a couple of connecting pieces. And so that's that's kind of a relief. Um, I thought it wasn't coming, but it will be here tomorrow. And so I can use the, uh, the included mics outside to see what this thing can do. It'd be interesting to see, uh, for one, first, if this thing has the ability to reject the wind, because it's going to be windy tomorrow, too. Although I think it's going to be raining most of the day, it's going to be kind of hard to do anything unless, uh, unless I'm under cover of some sort. But then uh, to see what the audio sounds like for the first time without having a lot of the problems with wind buffeting, as uh, the next recording definitely will show. Uh, this is what happens when, I, uh, when you get a, a condenser microphone or two and trying to record with it. It doesn't sound very good. Now it's recording. I wonder how many times I've had to hit the record button on this new recorder to get it to record. And, uh, uh, no windscreen, so, uh, you'll hear a lot of noise, a lot of wind buffeting in the microphones. That's typical of these things. But, uh, something I'm about ready to solve. Uh, well, maybe if I roll the window up, maybe that will help a little bit. Yeah, it does seem to help a little bit. Uh, still picking up on plosives real bad, even though I'm nowhere near the microphones. <laughs> but it does sound pretty good. Um, I'm monitoring it, but I have the volume turned all the way up because I do have the mic level set really low. Okay, now, and this works quite a bit differently than the uh, dr 7 that I had that ended up in the trash. Uh, this is a Tascam Porta Capture X8. It's an 8-track recorder. Uh, really kind of looking forward to using this for a, a multitude of different scenarios when it comes to not only podcasting, but recording audio in general. But I think what I need to do more than anything is go to the storage unit, maybe, or maybe not. I may not even need to go to the storage unit. I need to get another microphone. Because uh, these little tiny condenser microphones are probably just as bad, if not worse, than the uh, DR07's microphones when it comes to not not inhibiting uh, picking up plosives, sibilance, and wind. So I need to fix that. Now this was when I first got the thing. I had just gotten it from Dollar General, put the batteries in, plugged the mics in, and turned it on and started recording. So that's that's what happened. I ordered the Tascam Porta Capture X8 from Sweetwater as a bundle that had a, a micro SD card, micro SD XC, and a pair of Audio Technica headphones. I think they're ATM 30s, something like that. When I come back from the break. I'll test out the included mics, the little small condenser mics that are fit on top that can be arranged in uh, left and right or in an X pattern. So that's kind of cool. We'll see the differences in the audio. Catch 20 songs in a row every day at 9, noon, and 5. Radio is great for music. Radio is great for fun. Good radio. Is not afraid to take a stand in this land of the free. It's helping people understand in this land of the free. And where is the place on your dial where you will find the most effervescent, quintessent, incandescent, explosively pleasant, like glass over pheasant, personalities on the air? It's Everyday Tracks, a personal podcast journey. I'm Phil. 
I'm going to wrap up this episode talking about the Tascam Porter Capture X8 by talking about its recording capabilities. Earlier in this episode, I had mentioned that you can record six channels simultaneously. It does have ten inputs, but you can only record six of them at any one time. And you do that by assigning the inputs to different places where it's going to record. But it's very interesting how this works, and it's very clever. Very, very clever. It has a launcher. It kind of works like a smartphone launcher. You have a place that has all of these different apps, and you can even add to them. They're basically nothing more than just presets in reality. They're presets kind of like, uh, like presets on anything else. You create a preset, you name it, and you go to it whenever you need to do something. Presets for car radios, presets for video editing, all kinds of presets for everything. It kind of works the same way. And so if you want to do ASMR, well, it comes with an ASMR app or preset in the launcher. You just scroll it around to the ASMR button, press it, and the only thing you have to do is hit the record button if all of your inputs are set correctly. So it has the ASMR preset, voice recording, music, manual, field recording, which is the app I'm using right now to record this, and podcast. Out of all of those apps, they're only meant to record, and manual and podcast have completely different configurations. They're the only two that record a mix down track, where all the other ones do not. It just records one two channel track, and that's all you have, because it's only capable in any of these apps to record only two channels of input at any one time. So you're only getting one file that has a left and right or two tracks on them, or one and two. But the manual and podcast apps, well, the podcast app was actually meant for podcasting, although for some reason I kind of think that he didn't really think this out very thoroughly, because even though this does record up to six tracks or six channels simultaneously, you can only use four of them, because the other two tracks are for special effects on a pad, and it only has two pads, A and B, and that's all you have, which kind of makes you wonder, I don't know, why would you want to waste two channels on just two audio effects? Something doesn't sound right about that. So I'm going to take a look at seeing if there is a way that you can add more. Zoom makes a recording just for podcasting that's kind of centered more around podcasting, and it does have places where you can store uh, special effects or audio or clips but it has a place for four of them whereas this one only has two so it kind of makes you wonder I don't know about this does it sound right and if it has the ability to put more then I might be able to use this just for a, f- a podcast in and of itself that's containing one unit so I don't have to do that with anything else. That's what it, that would it would make so much sense. It would make it so much better and so much easier to produce content that not only is uh, level matched, but uh, I don't have to insert all this stuff later. I would have already built a library of things to use and then use them as I'm recording. So there's some experiment experimentation that uh, will come after I have already done a lot of the other things that I need to do first that are more important. And then the manual mode, of course, you have full access to all six recording channels. And each of those can be set up with a reverb or an EQ. Not that I would use any of the reverb because I'm sure it sounds pretty awful. Well, I don't know. Let's find out. Okay, I'm using the music preset available from the launcher and I uh, have the reverb turned off right now let's turn it on 
and see how it sounds. It probably sounds pretty bad. I have it set to 30 of 100, and it, the uh, the preset is studio. So I'm hoping maybe that it doesn't have a lot of reverb or a long, a long tail. Uh, I don't know. Um, I'm sure it probably sounds really weird in stereo, because that is, it is recording in stereo. Stereo and reverb at the same time. Boy, that's probably a mess. Okay, let's turn that off. But, uh, yeah, this thing has got a lot of options. Uh, right now, I'm using the vocal preset on this. I wonder if it's EQing for more of a vocal presence than anything else. That'd be kind of cool to see if it actually does that. Because if it is, then that's probably the reason why it sounds so clear. Is because it's EQ and it does have an EQ. I don't know if it has anything else. It would be kind of cool though. It had some very basic compression. Um, it doesn't have to be much. Just some basic compression to kind of take the edge off a little bit. So that would be kind of cool if it had that. But so far, I don't know. I haven't listened to any of these other preset apps from the launcher yet. This is the ASMR app, which is supposed to be for ASMR. I don't think it has any EQ or anything, any reverb or anything. I think it's just straight two-channel audio, and that's it. It doesn't have any presets. The only thing you can do is assign it inputs. So if you don't want to use the included mics, you don't have to. You can use balanced or line level in or USB. So that, there you go. It, the Tascam Porta Capture X8 also has four other apps. Uh, one is for tuning your instrument, or you can output a sine wave through the line out of the device. It also has a metronome, which is kind of interesting. It's like, what, a metronome? Yes. You can use the headphones or the speaker to play the beats in the metronome. It has a, a browser app, so you can browse the contents of your macro SD card. And it also has a place where you can launch it into a USB mass storage device. So you can make it a USB mass storage device, and you just have to hit the button. The one thing that you can use for this that doesn't require any apps is to use it to output sound into the computer because it recognizes the uh, Tascam Porta Capture X8 as a a separate audio device via USB. So if you go to Audacity or Ocean Audio or any other app on your computer that records, you can set the input to use the microphones or output any sound. Yeah, it's pretty cool, isn't it? Or you can even use it as a, a microphone to use on the web if you're streaming, like if you're on a Zoom or Skype call or anything else. It's pretty wild that what this thing can do. I'll be doing some more experiments with this and special features on upcoming episodes of Everyday Tracks so you can get a better idea of what you're dealing with. But this is a general overview podcast episode of my new Tascam Porter Capture X8. By the time you're hearing this, I would have had it two weeks now. I got, uh, in that time, a windscreen that doesn't really fit over the thing too well and a couple of cords uh, for splitting off. Uh, to different devices, whether it be a monitor or a camera to record for uh, while you're recording a video using your DSLR or whatever. It's actually really cool. And I'm happy that I have this. Is there anything that this thing doesn't do that I would like for it to do? I don't know. I really don't know. But there are a lot more things that this thing has that I am not talking about, like the USB Mix Minus that can be used in the podcast app. So there's so many things that this thing can do. And uh, there's a lot of different options for a lot of different types of recording, some of which you may hear on another episode of Everyday Tracks. But that's all I got for you on this episode. Thanks for listening. And join me again for another episode where I talk more about the Jeep and talk more about life in general.